good days that took sure, place, thank you took place 22 days to film uh yeah i think 22 23 days maybe yeah it was uh you know independent movie shoot quickly i mean the cast though i mean that <laughs> helped it facilitated everything uh, uh, yes i mean obviously you know great actors like that make make life uh, definitely easier for sure you know that's why you want to have them let's go back uh to the backstory to how you found found this story um i understand it was uh washington post that you came up yes with. it was it was an article that uh was on the front page of the washington post by eli saslow who is uh you know a very good writer he he's been he'd been already writing a series <clears throat> of uh features about uh you know the 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 opioid pandemic mm -hmm. and uh you know i found this one very uh very interesting i mean you know a lot of a lot of uh addiction stories sadly um you know they're tragic but they're not always new but what i found was fascinating about this one was uh you know this particular mother and this particular daughter and uh you know w where they start they start in a place that's already you know they've been at it for 11 years and uh you know and the mother is is all they're both so annoyed with each other they're so tired of each other that i thought that was a great place to start and <clears throat> and then the things that they have to put themselves through over the four days you know, I, I thought it, it, it was it was a, a movie waiting to happen. So, you know, I, I we found Eli. Um, I mean, I showed it to to my you know partners, John Abnett and Jake Abnett, and and they were enthusiastic. Also, we got in contact with Eli, the journalist, and he put us in contact with the two ladies. And uh, you know, it all it all happened quickly, all things considered. Mm -hmm. So this 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 story is a little different because a lot of these stories usually the the protagonist is the addict, but in this case, it's the mother. Uh, yeah, I mean, I you know, for me, the 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 protagonist was the relationship. You know, the mother daughter thing. You know, even even the happiest mother daughter relationships, you know, have at least you know from the point of view of of. Uh, in my point of view, are a lot of a lot of men. They seem to have a lot of fine print. There's always there's always a, you know there's there's a lot going on. There's a lot being negotiated, and there's a lot being uh, traded, even in um, in the best of relationships. So yes, I mean I think I think you know our our way in is the mother because she's the one, you know, from the get go in in, in the first scene in the movie practically she's the one not letting the daughter in you know it's it's up to her to to set the terms of of the relationship because she is not the addict um so in that sense yes i suppose uh you know the mother is a little bit more at the center but it is four days where you know the daughter was not high you know she was trying to stay clean so we got to see you know a, a lot of her not 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 totally clean you know still still struggling and still falling back on some of her um you know everything tricks lies whatever but um but yeah it was the mother daughter part of it and i guess our way in is the mother like you said mm -hmm. the actual mother and daughter in this case it's livy and amanda uh, yes and the courage they had to pretty much talk about their story for the making. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, they opened up to Eli in great detail. Eli spent quite a bit of time with them. And, and by the time he introduced them to us, you know, they were already all their friends. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they were very generous. Obviously, you know, there's, there's something intriguing and flattering, I suppose, if movie people come knocking on your door to tell your story, but it's also risky. You know, you don't know how you're going to be portrayed. And, and um, you know, these were four very messy days where, you know, arguably some very bad decisions are made mm -hmm. uh, among some good ones. Um, so yeah, you know, they were game. Amanda had, had been off of drugs for a while and I think, and she still is thankfully, and she's doing very well. Um, and I think they they both have been active in, 
in getting the word out there, um, you know, of, of, of um, the kind of help that that addicts and and uh, you know people addicted to drugs and and uh, and their relatives, um, the kind of support that they need, and also you know fighting to see addiction uh, as a medical matter and not as a criminal matter. Um, so yeah, they were, you know, they were, they were very, we, we, you know, I visited them and they, uh, with Eli and they took us, uh, on a very, uh, sobering tour of Amanda's haunts and, you know, very rundown parts of Detroit and where she lived and where she bought drugs and where she got high. And, you know, sometimes she lived in, you know, in absolute squalor and abandoned buildings while pregnant. I mean, there was, you know, um, but their spirit is great, you know. They're they're very uh, they're fighters and they're they're very uh, hopeful people. Now, as for the cast, um, you had worked with Glenn Close before in several projects. Um, when it comes to Mila, how did you know Mila was the one to play Molly? Well, you know, I, I had worked with Glenn before. I worked with her the first time on my first movie, which was produced by John Abnett, my partner who produced this one also. Um, and then he had, uh, you know, he had, uh, he was a producer on Black Swan. So, you know, he, he had a, a history of, of projects with, uh, with Mila. You know, I was always a fan of her. Obviously, she had done a lot of very funny stuff on her TV show and, and on comedies, but I, I'd seen her in a couple of, uh, a couple of dramas. Black Swan was one of them. And then another one, The Name Escapes Me. It was a, a movie with a, a movie by Paul Haggis that, you know, one of the storylines was uh, Mila and uh, James Franco. And, and she was, she was really terrific. I just, I just uh, had a hunch and, you know, John agreed, had a hunch that she would be good. And, and she's, I mean, she, she, she you know, I was rude. I mean, I was sure she was going to be good, but she surpassed my expectations. Now they had a great chemistry, obviously, but you had some funny scenes where they actually were, were kind of comical together. And how did you and Eli come up, you know, when it came to writing the script, putting that together? You know, a lot of that is based uh, on, on the real women's humor. You know, they're very forthcoming with the nuttiness and, and some of the pain and the extreme situations that they've been in. And uh, there's a kind of gallows humor there that is, uh, that I think they have and that Eli, you know, had it in the, uh, in the article and we, we uh, added a little more in the script. And then of course the women, you know, brought that, that attitude, that irony, um, you know, when, when people, you know, actors that are smart and are playing smart characters, there's just so much where you can, you know, they can mine situations that are human, recognizable and, and uh, absurd. That one of my favorite scenes was definitely at the medical office um, where you, you know, they capture the, the, the poster uh, photo. And I mean, that was, that was hilarious. You know, is that safe? Uh, <laughs> is that safe? Yeah. Well, you know, yes, that's, uh, it was, it was a moment when she's, uh, you know, sober for the first time in a long time. So I guess that, that, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, Glenn's reaction to it, of course, it's, uh, yeah, but that's the kind of of, uh, of nuttiness that this kind of you know desperate situation can cause. And you had a couple of keys. The alarm, you know, I think the alarm was something in their past. You know, Libby had to have an alarm because uh, at her worst, Amanda and and her boyfriend had uh, her then boyfriend, also an addict, you know, had broken in. And I don't know what, I don't know how the puzzle came about. It's something that either Eli or I thought of, you know, we wanted something that, that, uh, that Amanda, that, that uh, Molly could do that, that, that is just like something to pass the time and that, you know, should be fun if you enjoy them. But in this case, it's just a chore and she left it, you know, it's another reminder of something she didn't finish the last time she was here trying to get uh, clean. And, and there it is, you know, a reminder of, um, you know, it just, it just, it was one of those ideas that I don't even know when or who had it, but it's just one of those ideas that once you have it, it, it can be a metaphor for so many things, you know, just them trying to, you know, piece, piece their life together again. 
It was brilliant, by the way. Well, thank you for your time. And I do have to say, um, I am one of those many people that are looking forward to Cien Años de Soledad. Um, for the oh, yeah? Year. Yes, one of my favorites. Sure. You're yeah. one of my favorite writers. And I, I always yeah. read them in Spanish. To me, that was like the best literature. Yeah, and, and then the series will be in Spanish. You know, that was one of the uh, conditions that it had to be done, shot in Colombia and in Spanish. So, Thank you know, good for Netflix to uh, to agree to all that. Thank you. Really quick to wrap up, I must ask. I mean, right now in Latin America, this docu-series are pretty much, when it comes to artists, are pretty popular. If there was one going to be one of Gabriel Garcia Marquez, who do you think would be the ideal? to play his role to play him i have no idea you know I, i'm i'm probably the worst person to ask i um you mean there was going to be a mini series made in colombia i heard some of that you know i'm too close to it i have no idea who would play him and honestly i don't even know if i would watch it but that doesn't mean it can't be good or it can't be enjoyable for me it's just you know it, it's too close to home I understand. Thank you so much for your time. My time's up and I really, really All right. I'm with you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.